Hi, my name is Paul DSSB. You can call me Paul, or you can use my pronouns he and him. Uh, today I'm going to be showing uh, Marvel Nemesis Rise of the Imperfects for the Nintendo GameCube, uh, and we're going to be doing the any percent speedrun uh, for this submission for GDQ. Uh, this game released in September 2005 for the GameCube, PS2, and Xbox, uh, as well as the PSP and DS, but those handheld versions are very different from what we have here. Uh, what I just did is I went into New Game Plus uh, because uh, if you don't get notifications that you unlocked a new character or um, unlocked a new stage, uh, that really in uh, lowers the amount of time that there is to beat this game. Uh, we do run a real-time uh, attack uh, because there's not really an accurate way of getting the in-game time down to the minutes and seconds. Um, so we run New Game Plus, that way you don't have to deal with all those notifications for stuff you're unlocking as you're playing. This game is a 3D brawler slash beat -em up type game featuring a cast of Marvel superheroes and original characters meant to tie in with the simultaneously released Imperfect series of uh, graphic novels. Uh, it has not been featured at any marathon events and has a relatively small community, but it's been growing and is increasingly active. Uh, the first run was completed in August of 2014, and the game has changed a lot since then. Over those years, the time to complete the game has gone down by almost a complete hour, and several uh, alternative categories were added as well as faster strategies that were discovered as well. Um, and that's where we are now. So without further ado, uh, let's get into the run. Starting off uh, with our alien invasion, we are playing as the thing, we're on Brooklyn Bridge, uh, and we are just going to kill as many aliens as we can and figure out where they came from. I will be skipping cutscenes, so unfortunately you're not gonna get the full uh, width of the story, but I'm gonna just let you in on a secret, you're not missing much. You can pick up objects in this game, and you're going to see me do that a lot in this run. They're very important, one-shotting enemies, just like that. And we were a little bit late on our timing, but that's okay. We can still take out this guy as long as he stops jumping. It's very jump-happy. That works, too. As long as we get up before the cutscene triggers, then I'll feel good about myself. Nice. All right. So, we smash through the rubble, and we have our first boss fight of the game, which is a Decapitator. You're going to see later, these are just regular enemies, very bog-standard enemies. Um, but, when he's first introduced, he's a boss fight. And we're going to kill him by throwing cards at him until he dies. Easy as that. We skip the cutscene, and Wolverine is introduced. And now, we're going to be playing as Wolverine for a few missions. One of the best parts about this run is you get to see a lot of different characters in this game. A lot of the different characters that are in store for the versus modes as well. Um, uh, and uh, I just think that's pretty cool. You get to play as all your favorite Marvel heroes. And villains. There are a couple villains. The street fight is a pretty straightforward mission. Usually you're supposed to kill as many enemies as possible to open this barrier. But what we're going to do is we're just going to go right through it. Might take me a few tries. It's There we go. So that's uh, barrier skip. Uh, the main idea is to just uh, wall run for as little time as possible. We're going to use this trash can to uh, basically hit as many enemies as we can. And we're going to take out this decapitator, and I think that's everyone. I'm just going to hit this guy just in case. That is everyone. Oh gosh, that was my phone going off. I am so sorry about that. That will not happen in an actual uh, marathon race. Is my work phone. Cool. Next mission, House Party. We have to visit the Avengers Mansion and learn more about the uh, looming threat of these aliens. Um, so, uh, we arrive at Avengers Mansion, and uh, lo and behold, it's actually been overrun by aliens. So we need to get to the bottom of that. First, we gotta get past these security lasers by wall running. We break this bookshelf. And now we have a whole plethora of enemies to deal with. That's okay. Got a double kill there. That should kill on fall damage. Nice. Ooh, that is very unlucky. Uh, but that's okay. These enemies are very, very uh, keen on trolling me. Oh my gosh. Surely. There it is. Okay. Give me, I don't usually do the run from this particular position. 
if we hit up the Oh, we did. I think we're more toward the left side. Yep. Collateral, nice. And it did actually kill. We don't want to enter rage because there's a cutscene for it and we don't want to see it. Alright, we're not doing half bad actually. That one Marauder did troll us, but we're making it work. We tried to get the spawn kill on the Marauder, but fortunately we were just a little too close to it, got in that dead zone. And we have to find the other Marauder, get it with an air throw, and we're out of there. Not too bad for a house party. Part of that was just rough RNG with the first Marauder, but what can you do? They like to troll you sometimes. Next mission, we have our first boss fight with an actual character. And we have a strategy where we're going to try and abuse how early you can get a finisher. This game has finishers, similar to Mortal Kombat. Uh, I'm going to be quiet while I try to focus on getting a very quick kill on Dunk the Town. Ooh. Made a little mistake, but I think we'll be okay. Hit Rage, get a little reset. Nice, and we got the quick kill. Uh, so if Couch Commentary were to uh, step in there, my buddies Mystic or Falco or whoever else might want to join in that knows about this game, uh, what we did is we staggered her just barely so that she wouldn't think she lost a significant amount of health, and then pushed her into a situation where... Ooh, okay, no softlock, that's good. <laughs> that camera angle is very strange. Um... We pushed her into a situation where uh, she doesn't think she's lost a lot of health, but she actually has. Um, if she does lose a lot of health, and she knows that, then she will uh, start teleporting around, doing this whole minigame with the barrels, and you don't want that. So what we do is we kill her as soon as we can. Now we get to play as Electra, and that means more barrier skip action. Let's see. That's okay, we got a second try. Nope. Hit this guy to get him off our back, and we'll go for a third try. Nice, we did get third try, which is great, because now all we have to do is run to the end. And that's death from afar. Typically, you have to defeat waves of enemies. You know, they're teaching you how projectiles behave, uh, because this is the first character you get to play as that uses them. Um, but what we do is we actually go pretty pacifist. Uh, we don't kill as many enemies as we need to. In fact, we don't kill any. And in the same spirit of that mission, we're not going to kill any enemies in this mission either. Uh, I'm going to be doing some platforming and focusing on my positioning for it. We're a little too high, I think. So I'm going to go down one, actually. Not bad. I think we're high enough. Just barely. Just gonna slow crawl here. Alright, not the best, but decent. Like, I'm, I'm okay with that. Um, ideally, that first positioning we get on that first side of the building, which I just called building one, um, we get a slightly higher positioning, but we were actually a little bit lower, so, or we were actually too high. Um, from where we want to be. It, it's it's complicated. There's visual cues that I use on the building's texture. I don't have time to get into like everything that I'm looking for, uh, but we have resources and guides that uh, break down what it, is, what it is I'm looking for exactly. Uh, here we're fighting against Daredevil. Our goal is to get him to jump off. Uh, right now he's being way more aggressive than he usually is. Let's see if we can bait him. Ooh, he didn't do what we wanted. That's okay. This should work. Nicely done. Uh, Daredevil, or as I like to call him, Troll Devil, he has all sorts of weird things that he likes to do besides what I want. Uh, <laughs> which is, ideally, he jumps to the, to the skybox and then flings himself directly off the edge, but sometimes he likes to play a little bit naughty. Uh, so we have to take matters into our own hands. We get to play as an imperfect for a mission, and we're going to be killing the thing. Well, not actually killing him. We are going to be uh, fighting him again later. Uh, but these are the sacrifice missions, where you have to play as uh, one of the imperfects, one of the invaders, and take out a hero, so that you can no longer play as them. So we're going to be taking advantage of all these objects we have. 
Uh, Fault Zone, the character I'm playing as right now, is actually very much of a mirror or echo fighter, you might say, uh, to what the thing does. Another character who uses earthquakes and just really raw strength. Uh, we're having a little bit of trouble here. Alright, not bad. Uh, let me get up and then ground slam. Get up and then ground slam. Ooh, he was a little out of range for that one. That's okay, we'll throw a card. He doesn't like that. Yeah, so there are a number of ways that you can take out the thing. I find uh, using cars to whittle down his health and then fi finishing off with like wall run into ground slam is a really good idea. Um, using her finisher is also a good idea. Her finisher cutscene is among the shorter ones, uh, and you don't ever get a slow motion replay as well, so it's usually worth going for. Uh, but now we're going to be playing as Daredevil. And Daredevil missions are decently longer. This is the first like instance of longer missions where you're like going and fighting wave after wave moving along through the level. Uh, so this is a great spot uh, for taking donations or explaining more about the mechanics and nuances of the game, uh, which uh, Couch Commentary could definitely help with. Uh, it's not actually what I meant to do, but that's fine. I'm gonna get to the other side, and then we're just gonna pop Rage. Uh, I'm gonna immediately go into a super block because I see that he is throwing something at me. Just gonna super block them off of me. Ooh. Wow, they are very aggressive. That's new. That's okay. Not our best use of rage, but hey, it's also about being economical, right? The less you uh, use your energy, the more you get it to like uh, re regain uh, on itself. So I have a really decent amount of energy right now. Nice. It's a good grab that we got. Don't always get that. A little invisible barrier action. That's okay. Just launch it right at him. I do know where all the enemies are going to spawn. They are set in stone. And they do tend to have like a habit of like, here's the item box that they try to pick up. Like that. We're gonna go into rage while we wait for that invader to die. And we're gonna take out these remaining ones. Three decaps. These guys are usually pretty scary. Uh, except this guy. He is completely AFK. But that's okay. Take advantage of him and we win. Again, not bad. Um, it, this is a kind of an aside because splits aren't going to show in the marathon run, but even though you see that I'm like kind of in the red, this is considered a very decent pace. Uh, another uh, slightly long form mission where we play as Daredevil, we're going to be abusing his uh, rising uh, air super, uh, which is very, very strong and homes in on enemies very nicely. And ideally, no shenanigans. Uh, already getting a little bit. That's okay. Stomp him. Wow. Okay. Wow. Wow. These guys are very aggressive today. That's okay. It's good to keep me on my toes sometimes. So the way the rising air super works is you jump and then you immediately press R and A to do a super attack. regular series of punches here, and then pop rage because we know we're going to get into a cutscene. Usually the cutscene arrives during rage, so I probably just press it a little bit early, uh, but sometimes things get uh, queued back and uh, you can't always plan accordingly. This game isn't perfect is what I'm trying to get at, you know? And that's fine. It's within reason, you know? It's, it's, it's decently predictable. We have an invader joining us below. Usually they like to stay up there. Again, very aggressive. But that's okay. We're gonna wait for this guy to throw it. Scoot around, rising air super. Head over to this guy, who is AFK. No, he's not. He's just biding his time, waiting for me to get close. That was almost not great. Whoa, whoa, whoa. My character snapped forward. Good. 
he didn't push me off the edge, that would have been annoying. I'm just gonna whip. And we're just gonna whip. Uh, I was gonna rising air super, but he jumped. This guy is very jump happy, so we're gonna move on. Did a quick super block to reflect that back. May have not been the most energy efficient, but you do what you can. Just gonna hit Rage so we can clean up the rest of these guys a little bit easily. Uh, I'm not sure what's up oh, there. He is. One thing that really is not fun about this level in particular is the changes in elevation make it kind of unpredictable as to where the enemies want to go when they chase after you. Like, if the enemies start getting aggressive, they uh, will probably jump up to meet you, probably jump down to meet you. Oh jeez. There we go. Uh, we don't have enough energy for a rising air super, so we're going to have to get a nice collateral grab there. Uh, it didn't actually kill the main one way through, but that's fine. We got a kill there, and we come in for the kill there. Okay, not terrible. Um, we did get decently trolled in some regards, but, you know, these things happen. All in all, this is considered a very you know, solid run. Uh, now we have another boss fight. We're going to be fighting against Johnny Ohm. Uh, traditionally, the way you do this, as the thumbnail would suggest right there, is you break the clock. Uh, he is harnessing the electricity in Grand Central Station to fuel his schemes, um, and you're supposed to take them out so we can stop uh, regenerating from them. We're not going to do any of that. What we're going to do is we're going to swing over this pit, and we're going to bait him to join us. And then when he joins us, uh, he realizes that he can't actually sustain himself in the air nearly as well as Daredevil can. Uh, so he falls quickly to his death. Now, uh, beta test, our upcoming mission, this is the first mission where we play as Paragon. Um, I should let you know now that if you suffer from epilepsy or you're prone to seizures in any way, any sort of eye strain, eye troubles, you may want to look away for the next minute or so. Uh, because it is kind of ugly. You can see a lot of flashes just like that. Nice. Delayed reaction. It's not quite homing in on the line that I would prefer, but we are getting most of the turlin engines now. And that's good. So most of this mission is pretty self-explanatory. We are just taking out targets. Ooh, we got uh, kicked off. That's interesting. We got a little bit of a displacement effect where we moved too close to an object and it slid us off. I'm actually going to move on to this section of Turlin Engines while I wait for the next barrier to spawn in uh, because things got slightly out of whack on the timing. And that should do it. I should be safe to move on now. Trying to be a little bit energy cognizant by only using the super for our uh, attack finisher. The reason for that is we have to use a lot of energy here for uh, rising air supers. Nice. Moving on. And we get to show one of the first discovered glitches in this game, which is squeezing yourself through that barrier just enough that you trigger the... Uh, the victory plane on the other side. Typically, you'd have to break the rest of the turtle engines, but we don't have to. Now, we're going to move on to some very wacky glitches uh, with our friend Storm, and hopefully we can get this. This is a very cool glitch. We don't fully understand it yet, but we have a good heuristic approach uh, to getting it done. One, two, three. And that ought to do it. What we're doing is we're damaging the Turlin engine just enough to get it exactly where we want it. Break the armor. Get through the barrel. Good. And that. Ooh, that was almost right. That might be too low. Okay, good. Uh, we're not quite hitting the mark. Hold on. Last try. Ooh, that's not good. We need more energy if we're going to do more attempts now. That's okay. I think it's worth being able to show off this glitch. Huh, we are really not breaking it. But the Marauder is not harassing us either. That should do it. Nice. Okay. So, wasn't exactly as fast as we would like, but we did get to show off the glitch, uh, and that's good. 
Um, so that glitch allows us to only defeat one Turlin engine. Typically you do that one and then you have to go all the way to the other side of the bridge and do another one with a whole obstacle course. There's tons of enemies and it gets really laggy. Big pain if you've ever played uh, that vanilla. Uh, but instead we just do one Turlin engine and we trick the game into thinking we, we broke both of them. Hopefully we get this line up. Yeah, this has been a bit of a pain in practice lately, but... Sometimes enemies don't spawn in exactly as you're used to, and that's okay. You know, a lot of this game is improv, which is one of the reasons I think it doesn't make for a terrible uh, marathon game. You know, you'll see a lot of strategies that you don't usually see, and that's totally fine. Let's see if we can do an air slam. Nope, he ran away. Just throw him into the wall. Well, at least this guy was already on the other side. Usually you have to wait for him to break the wall. I think we got a double kill there. We did. Not sure where this guy went. Where'd he go? Oh, he teleported behind me. Well, this is, uh, yeah. Usually we already have an object in our hand before this guy even spawns in, so we can just spawn kill him. Uh, unfortunately, didn't get exactly what we wanted there. See, I was hoping that I could do an air combo so that I could then uh, chain it into some air projectiles. Did not get exactly what I wanted there. That's okay. That's okay. We're going to use our wake-up attacks. Uh, basically, projectiles and air throws are going to be the best ways to deal with desolators and modders. They are basically the same enemy. I think desolators have slightly smarter AI. That should be the last one. There might be one invader, yep. Uh, another invader? Perchance? Ah, yes. The late spawn. Classic. Alright. Not the best. Bit unlucky. The, uh, the intro really definitely messed me up, because typically you get those enemies to line up and you just throw the jewel case at them. Um, for nightstand or whatever it is, the small table. Uh, and then because of that, you get the next wave of spawns in sync, so you can do the exact same thing, and you get more time to prepare. In any case, now we have two of the fastest boss fights in the game. Definitely some of the easiest as well. For this one, uh, Storm can fly, Fault Zone cannot. And that's how it goes. And for the next one, Death by Fire, Solara is uh, um, uh, immune or at least very resistant to fire, and therefore very resistant to fire effects. Uh, so what we do is we find this uh, dumpster that's already on fire, we bait Daredevil over to it, we throw him in, and then he just kind of doesn't know what to do. He can't get out, and he just burns to death. It's very nice. Oh, he actually hit me. That's uh, unusual, but that's okay. We'll bait him in again, and this time we'll just throw him in. We broke the grab. Try it again. Nice. We need to displace him into it a little bit, so we punch him once. And there we go. Sometimes this victory slow-mo right here that you're seeing can be a little bit trippy on the eyes as well. Sometimes that fire effect is way too close to the camera. So I should warn that sometimes there's a seizure warning there too. Uh, but for the most part, that's it for the rest of the run as far as eye concerns. Now we get to play as Venom who is probably my favorite pl uh, character to play as. Uh, his first two missions are a lot like the first two missions of Daredevil. They're pretty long. So this is another great spot for taking donation rates. Really just going to be an onslaught of enemies while I mostly do the same things. You know, picking up objects, throwing objects, um, doing uh, web sling attacks, and um, doing uh, jab grabs, as I call them. I come from Smash Bros. So, you know, jab grab. There you go. Because these missions are a little bit on the longer side, we don't feel bad entering Rage. In fact, we feel very good about it. We're going to abuse it as much as we can. So far, not great, but that's okay. Didn't want to do my aerial recovery because I'm right next to these guys. I'd rather just take the free wake up super. Don't know where I'm aiming exactly. Pick up the spear. Wow, we only hit the walls. We didn't actually hit the decapitator. That's okay. Go back into the hallway. 
We're immediately going to pick up and throw this guy. And then the other one, we're going to just kind of let him cook. Because uh, we can get some friendly fire. Ideally, uh, it tries to shoot us and it only hits decapitators. Um, but if not, you know, we're just going to let him... Just let him chill for a while, okay? I don't know why this guy went into the hallway. That's okay. If I'm right, the other... Yep, yeah, they'll teleport in. I was about to say, they'll just teleport over to us. We're going to pop Rage because we already flung him across the room. Kind of, uh... Took any possibility of making this fast and uh, already threw it away. That's totally fine. We're just gonna super block to get out of that situation. Get a grab and we win. All right, not bad. Next mission we have is seek and devour. Uh, it is a mission where I'm going to be focusing because there's a decent amount of strategies we can use with the way that the objects are placed in the level. So another great spot for donations or a spot for couch commentary to step in and uh, talk through what are the what are the things I'm looking for. Uh, not a great start, but okay. We managed to get one hit on two of them, which is not ideal. Usually you get one to two hits on all three of them. That's okay. Two are already dead, so we went web sling this guy. Got a web sling. There we go. The positioning I want. We throw the car. It's supposed to hit the Marauder too, but, you know, as long as the Marauder didn't get to shoot me. Care too much about using energy, so we're going to bully this guy. And bully this guy too. I don't want him to break the truck he's next to. Because we need this truck. For this, double kill. Uh, well, not exactly a double kill. This guy is still alive and kicking. We're going to run close to him. Typically, you would just web sling from that position, but we know that um, the way this game works, uh, <laughs> it wants me to home in on uh, those turtling engines, so. But we don't we don't uh, care about breaking those turtle engines in this count in this uh, mission. Typically, I'd like to keep that car for longer, but that's all right. Ooh, that, we got some hostile marauders. It looks like he took himself out, so that's good. Nice. I was hoping I could find a uh, street lamp uh, to use there, but fortunately, it it had already been broken. We're just trying to get this Marauder to be at the same Y level as us. Nice. Now we need to find that uh, decap. There he is. Yeah, see, that's what I was talking about earlier, how uh, the game will try to home in on the uh, Turtlin engines. We don't really care for them. I want to be somewhat cognizant of my energy here. Um, nice. Hopefully he doesn't throw. Good. We also took extra damage from that. I was hoping I could punch the car into him. It didn't quite work out. I'll just do this. That didn't work either. And that didn't work either. Okay, he is just extra tanky. Wow, I took a lot of damage there. Okay, that's fine. As long as I, uh, you know, don't take too much more. One more Marauder around the corner. There he is. Uh, since we're on the left side, we'll do a left wall. This is the part where, uh, similar to what we did uh, in Daredevil vs. Johnny Ohm, uh, we are going to bait this guy into dying. Oop, uh oh. That was almost really bad. There's a part in that wall that's uh, invisible that you can still cling to. We almost went past it and killed ourselves. <laughs> uh, that's alright, though. Uh, sometimes one of the decapitators doesn't want to jump off, and there's nothing you can do to make him. Uh, we call them cowards, and we just kill them the old fashioned way. We don't want to break this semi-truck. We want to use it if possible. I do wish we had a car that we could throw at this decapitator, but we're able to bully him with rage. Nice, he finally stopped blocking. Cool, we're in a good position where we can use the semi-truck on this smaller. Kinda have to wait for him to commit. Ooh, we want to get away. Nice, we got away just in time. He dies to fall damage. And we will do another left wall. 
Venom loses a lot of height with subsequent air uh, web swings, so you do want to be careful where you jump from and how often you swing. So what I do is I do a super jump from the platform, and then I start swinging. Hopefully neither of them are cowards. Uh, we got one coward, which is uh, fair. You know, sometimes that just happens. Wait for him to land. I was hoping I could get a nice uh, super throw on him, but you can do it that way. We had a good first half to that Seeking of Hour, or actually no, the first uh, Street Lamp was not perfect, but you know, it was fine. Now we move on to Fatal Heat, which is a boss fight versus Solara. There is a chance at a soft lock here. However, we have some approaches to uh, really negate uh, the possibility of that. Um, basically, it's possible to shove her under the floor, and uh, we're going to try our best to not do that. Because of that, anytime she's on the floor, we don't want to throw an object at her because we don't want to push her under it. That's all right. Just don't want her to shoot me. Don't shoot. Good. Two things you want to be concerned about in this level: uh, her shooting you and uh, her uh, regaining health from the flame jets. Uh, we don't have a lot of heavy objects anymore. Oh wait, we do. Okay. Now that she's low. Well, we'll just go for a fatality. For a finisher. Excuse me. Wrong game. Wrong franchise. Um, but yeah, there you go. Typically, you just throw heavy objects at her until she dies. Uh, but sometimes you do have to take matters into your own hands because you run out of heavy objects due to unforeseen circumstances. So, we just take her out the old-fashioned way. Lethal Toxin. This is another uh, boss fight where you can just bait the enemy into uh, going into the pit. Uh, it's actually very easy to do so. Uh, assuming... That Venom is not AFK. Sometimes Venom will just AFK for the beginning of this, and you have to kind of bait him and coerce him. Um, but here it looks like he wants to party. So let's take him up on his offer. Let's party. Now, one small optimization you want to do whenever you're baiting them above the pit like this is you want to break line of sight. He tried to get a little kick on me. I just did an aerial recovery, so we're totally fine. Uh, you want to uh, go right under that little broken uh, barrier where the pit starts. Um, so that way you break line of sight and they stop shooting at you. They realize they can't get an angle, so they take matters into their own hands. And we have a, a, a longer mission as Paragon. Uh, so this is another good couch commentary spot. A lot of enemies. You're going to be seeing a lot of the same combo that I used in beta test, where I hit A, A, and then R plus A, uh, so that I don't use too much energy on my finisher. But I do get the finisher so that I can cleave enemies. Cleaving is very important in, in missions like this. You know, at least, uh, you, you want like the highest ratio of, um, or is it lowest ratio? You want a good ratio of attacks inputted to enemies defeated, you know? Like, input three attacks, but it actually kills like six enemies. That's fantastic. Uh, there's one enemy alive somewhere. Wait, no, we just have a late spawn. You may have noticed um, we entered Rage, but we didn't have a cutscene. There's actually uh, a bit of a glitch with Paragon. Uh, she doesn't have a Rage cutscene when she's facing left. We're not entirely sure why. We're not sure if it's like, oh, they just never programmed her facing left for a Rage cutscene. We know that this game was like decently rushed to development. So some things are just not quite in there. Um, as a result, balancing is also kind of out of whack. Balancing is kind of a meme in this game. Um, but yeah, she does not have a rage cutscene when she's facing left, so we take advantage of that, and we enter rage if we feel like we need to. A little off on her spacing there, that's okay. These Ravager enemies, uh, are, um, ooh, they're some of the few, uh, grounded enemies that can shoot you, and they're a big, they're a big pain, uh, because they can also, uh, do a super block, which reflects projectiles like our super block. Very frustrating if they uh, continuously do that because you just have to wait. There's no other strategy, you just have to be patient. Uh, this is the last guy we need. Let's take him out with that. Oh, we do actually have a couple more there. Nice. Okay, now we just uh, race to the finish, we just get out of here. We do have just enough energy to do what I like, which is uh, wall jump, teleport across, wall jump, teleport across. Do a uh, dive attack, and then we're out of there. 
Now we get to play as uh, everyone's favorite superhero, Spider-Man. Um, our first mission in all of its glory, uh, we break computers. That's it. We just break 11 computer terminals. Uh, but we do have some strategies to make it a little interesting. What I'm going to do at the start here is I'm going to drain my energy such that when I try to range grab a computer, I don't accidentally range grab an enemy instead. Like that. Um, that is something we would ideally avoid. But because I lost a little bit of time uh, when I accidentally swung into that barrel, I had a little bit more energy regained than I typically would. I don't know if that one that we just kicked over there has the alarm ringing. No, it doesn't. So we do have to kick it again. There we go. Typically, I'd be on the other side, but it's fine. There are six computers up top. We accidentally fell below, and we accidentally pop Rage. Uh, no worries, uh, except actually a little bit of worries, because now we have a much higher likelihood of accidentally grabbing enemies. So let's uh, hope we don't. Make sure we get our angles nice and precise. Not, not bad. Uh, it is kind of bad. But we had a lot of unforeseen happenstances that, you know, what can you do? Uh, next mission is airlift. It's a pretty scary mission, so I will be trying to stay focused. Uh, we have to maintain health on these helicopters that are going to escort people to safety. Uh, so this is another dono slash um, couch commentary moment. I'm going to be pretty quiet. get some good luck on our <laughs> collaterals. Excellent. We did hit the helicopter more than we usually do, but I think we can make it work. Uh, I'm stuck on a thing. There we go. I'm stuck on the newsstand. All right, first helicopter down. That's the hard part. So now we're mostly in the clear. Just got to be a little bit careful with how we use this taxi. Pretty safely. Any collateral? Yes, barely. Hit his head. Now we have one final enemy, which we just jump up. We always know where it's going to be. We just spawn kill it. And that is airlift. And that is a pretty optimal airlift, I must say. Uh, typically, with that uh, first taxi that we threw, we'd hit all four enemies and it wouldn't even be on fire. Uh, and then we would turn around and get the other ones. But what can you do? All right, now we have two boss fights with the exact same strategy, which is to swing or get uh, flying off of the um, Daily Bugle and bait the enemy into their death. So first, Spider-Man versus Venom. So we're just gonna hang out here by the death plan. We don't want to go too far away because we will automatically die. We just want to bait him into jumping off. He does not know how to swing very well. Excellent. He goes for a swing attack, and he is not nearly high enough, uh, and he is also committing himself to just dying. <laughs> the swing attack would send me up, too, so I would just instantly air recovery. Anyways, high voltage, I do have to be quiet because I have to, um, uh, there's a timing to this, so I need to count it out loud. We'll see if I get it. One, two, three, four. I can't see myself super well. Two, right. There we go. I think we're in a good spot. Yep. Nailed it. Excellent. So the camera can be really funky there. So what I do is I super jump and then I fly straight like true north. Um, and uh, I just count out 
like three and a half to four seconds to get into the position where uh, we can just float uh, without losing too much height. Uh, in any case, I don't even have a whole lot of time to get into it exactly because we're in the next mission, which is Field Trip to Hell, uh, where I have to uh, position my uh, analog stick in the upright position such that I spawn on the platform to the left or directly under it. Sometimes you can get that. Time to break some Sherlin engines as the Human Torch. It's a very easy mission. And one of those strategies is to immediately drop down on the left so that we can immediately drop down under where we're supposed to spawn, pick up a rock, and the rock will one-shot the Sherlin engine. Got shot, that's okay. Uh, typically that takes it out, that's fine. We're gonna grab these uh, newsstands or magazines or whatever they are. We're gonna bank it off the wall and then we're gonna shoot. Very flashy KO that you can get. And that's it. That is Field Trip to Hell. Nicely done. More or less perfectly. Um, we did get shot once, but you know, you can't account for everything. Torchbearer is a long mission where there isn't a whole lot of eventful. Um, it's really just like smart uh, usage of items, smart usage of energy, and smart positioning uh, on enemy AI. So this is a fantastic spot for donations. One of the best spots for donations. Not a whole lot to explain. We are going to be picking up these items, which I call toothbrushes, because they look like toothbrushes. They're very good for crowd control. Unless they snap on a wall like that. But that's okay. No, my toothbrush. That's fair. Typically the barrier was right there, huh? Oh, he lived. There we go. Yep, there's that super block I was looking for. That's another thing. I think it's like frame one effectively, so they can just do it mid getting combo. Wait, <laughs> push the barrel. Gotta be careful of that. Um, which, I mean, there's not much you can do about it. Okay, did get through. Let's see how much we can use this two for. I hope you don't hear my cat screaming at me right now. She is. Uh, she's either about to have her automatic feeder go off, or it literally just went off and she's just being dumb. But I think any cat uh, owner who's watching this can relate to that. This is one of those endurance check missions where when you're first learning this run, it's very intimidating. Uh, I know I used to die here a lot when I was not nearly as good at Human Torch. Um, so practicing as Human Torch um, and studying the guide will really, really help you here. Um, don't sweat if you are struggling with it, because I used to struggle with it, and I have the roll in this game. I need to fly so I can dodge that ground quake. I do need to get him away from those barrels. Don't usually want to do any fights down here because of those barrels. It can be very scary, um, but we did it anyway. Um, we're just built differently. I wanted to get on the opposite side of him so that I could make him fall down here where he's a little bit easier to deal with. And now that I have rage, I can kind of just bully him. Remember kids, bullying is okay if they are sent here to kill you and your family. I'm often saying this. We are out of energy. We are not out of strategies. Wait a minute, did we just... It, we just air would the, um... The Ravager that we weren't even fighting? That's actually very impressive. Because air 2 is meant to home in on whatever you just air warmed. I don't even usually use the term air 2 because it's so often just, you know, the air combo. That's very, very cool that we hit that. Oh. <laughs> the other barrel spawned. I didn't even notice. That's okay. They might do their ground quick instant. Okay, they didn't because I stopped them. Some superheroes are four. Uh, he did try to do his uh, quick quake, but he couldn't. 
throws are going to help you do a lot of crowd control when you don't have items. We don't want to pop rage here. We just want to bully him. I, but we accidentally pop rage. That's okay. He dodged. Right. Here we just do a free fall. It's faster than uh, doing um, uh, an air dive. Uh, but you do have to be careful. If you have like a tiny sliver of health, you will take fall damage and you will die. Um, old friends, we are going to uh, finally put the thing to rest. Is what I would say. In in the Fault Zone's mission, you do actually kill him. In this mission, we just uh, make him stop being evil, because he's currently getting mind-controlled. In case you were wondering why we ever fight uh, good people and we're not playing as bad people, it's usually because they got mind-controlled. It's a big uh, theme in this game. We just want to push him into electric walls as much as we can. One of the best ways to do it is like that. Uh, we accidentally hit the barrel, which is unfortunate. We have very wide sweeping punches, and they're on fire. And my cat is yelling at me. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, we are frozen in place in the air. All right, there we go. That Tesla coil is going to blow up any minute now. I don't care if it hits us both, as long as it hits him as well. He is, I think, dead. Yep. And we didn't get a slow mo because he died of natural causes. Allegedly. <laughs> he uh, he just kind of died of fall damage, so we didn't have any input on it. Along came a spider, similar to Fatal Heat, is a pretty... Um, it's actually basically the exact same matchup, except he can't heal anymore. Uh, but we do want to be careful about our line of sight, so I'm going to immediately uh, dodge him. And then wait for him to get in our line of sight, so we can throw a box at him. Um, I don't like that I can't move because he's right on me, um, but that's okay. Don't shoot. Good boy. Don't shoot. Good boy. He just drained all of his energy on a super uh, block, but that's okay. Now we can shoot him, or we can just do a finisher. Spidey's finisher is also not too slow. It's about the same speed as just doing a regular kill and getting an instant replay, so we have no trouble just doing that. Uh, I'm going to talk over you because he's saying the A word. No. That is actually one thing we may need to keep in mind uh, for a family-friendly environment like GDQ. Um, uh, Spider-Man and The Thing do like to say the A word, but you'll never hear The Thing say it because we never win as him. <laughs> Anyways, now we get to play as Iron Man. Uh, this is a pretty difficult mission, uh, but I feel conf confident uh, talking over it, so I don't think it'll be too bad. Or It's not a really difficult mission. It's just a long one. So, another endurance check, like torture. That's okay. I actually managed to get two hits on him there. Now uh, we're gonna pick up this lance. Throw him. So we do want to be in this hallway. I'm just gonna throw him again. That will kill. Pick up this lance. Fly over. There's gonna be three invaders that spawn in. Hopefully we can get at least two. Nice. So we got three. And then this guy was just walking away. Uh, one thing you'll come to notice uh, as Iron Man is um, he is a lot like the comic, uh, uh, a lot like the comics, or a lot like how he is in the beginning of Iron Man One, which is to say he's kind of drunk. Um, <laughs> his aim is just not perfect, um, so he swings pretty wildly, and you're gonna get a lot of misses that you really don't think you should get. This game does have like a form of aim assist, as you've come to expect by now. Um, just for whatever reason, uh, he, uh, he, uh, you know what it is? Jarvis and the aim assist are just feuding with each other, and they can't come to an agreement, so then it's just Robert, you know, Robert, not Robert Downey Jr., Tony Stark left to his own devices. Or I guess lack of his own devices. Uh, I'm stuck right now, so I'm going to fly so I can get out of this bookshelf. Okay, that was a weird position to get stuck in, but we weren't, like, hard stuck, so... No biggie. It's very hard to get in a position where you're like soft locked in this game. There are a couple spots, but we've long passed them. Do you want to be a little bit mindful of our energy here? Because this. Ah, okay. I thought we had one more invader to kill, but we must have cleaved him accidentally. Okay, we got a nice combo where we can get some electric ceiling damage on him. The goal here is to just finish off the rest of the enemies and defeat the computer, our arch nemesis. 
Actually, that would be his arch nemesis after the whole Jarvis thing I suggested earlier. Uh, we tried to throw that in an invader, but I think we just missed it cleanly. That's the computer that we're meant to destroy. Since we've already dislodged it, we've already done the work of destroying it effectively. So now we just have to take out the remaining enemies. Alright, we didn't get that dive attack the way we wanted, so we just, you know, happy little accident, turn it into a, a rage cutscene. Um, we just want to make sure we use this rage as efficiently as possible. Uh, we we kind of did. We got to kill one obliterator with it. We're bullying this one. I don't care if those uh, explode. It'll just help me leave them both in on me. I should have killed. Alright. Punch this at him. Not bad. Oh, he lived with a tiny sliver. Oh my god, now he's super blocking. There we go. You know, it's a good thing that Tony punches so drunk, because that means there's so much lag between his normal punches uh, that we were able to time it efficiently against that super block. Call of Heroes, we need to uh, yeah, we need to defend two cell phone towers. And the best way to do that is by breaking the Daily Bugle sign and committing some vandalism. Because we're going to force enemies to their death. Aha, you thought... Only in boss fights can you influence the AI to jump off and kill themselves. Well, no, if you were paying attention, we did that in Seek and Devour as well. But, we're also going to do it in Call of Heroes. Um, and it's going to be super cool. For these invaders, it's not very efficient to force them all to jump off, because they can all die in like one hit with an object, or with a shotgun blast with a skull. Uh, but once the decapitators spawn in, then we'll be very thankful that we destroyed this sign. A little bit hard to get them when they're moving like that, but that's okay. It put us in the perfect position. Now we're going to bait these decapitators. Uh, looks like only one of them is interested, but that's okay. We'll force them to be interested. Uh, just drag him over. We did get a nice collateral, so can't complain. Cool. And then I think the other one should want me. It looks like one of them is fighting the tower, but that's okay. We can just kind of let him cook for a little bit. Come back for him. Oh no, we did actually get both of them to behave. That ought to do it. And then I think we're moving on to the next tower. Yep. I do have a cat on my desk right now, and that's a little concerning. <laughs> there we go. The reason it's concerning is I don't want her hitting my split key. Uh, and I also don't want her blocking my vision. That's okay, she can sit next to me, she's a good girl. I'm gonna take out these enemies while maintaining some energy. We don't want to pop rage, but uh, we might as well. This guy's gonna die to fall damage, and then we can get a nice shotgun blast on him. Wait for this guy to jump up here, and then we're just gonna throw him off. Usually struggles a bit to get on. Nice, we lined it up. And we want to fly over to the other side here. Pick up this guy and throw him. I like to use the cell tower on this next guy, and we're done. And that is uh, Call of Heroes. Next mission we have is another boss fight, and it's actually one that we're not able to uh, cheese with um, a ring out. But there is another way to cheese, and I will show you. But first, I must be silent and serious while I focus. We're going to be taking advantage of something we did in Field Trip to Hell, which is uh, the analog stick position to influence AI and positioning. As soon as we get into the second unskippable cutscene, I'm going to hold down right. Starting now. Hopefully this works. It did indeed work. I'll explain what I'm doing uh, after I win. Okay. Can't let him get to the ring. I want to push him back. That kind of works. Ooh, no, it didn't. I was hoping I could pick up this box and throw it at him, but Tony is not picking it up. That's okay. We lost a little bit of time because we let him heal, but that's okay. We're just not going to let him heal again. Um, is what I would say. I think at this point we go into plan B, which is to take out the Tesla coils like you're supposed to. So, didn't get to do what I wanted, but that's okay. 
He's no longer able to heal, and that's the important part. Typically what we do, or what I tried to do there, is um, use the Tesla coils to hurt him uh, and keep him away from the, the ring so he can't heal up. Uh, but instead we can just disable it so he's not able to heal up. That was a mistake. Let's just go into Rage and do some bullying. Don't have enough energy for finisher. Mm. Did just kind of throw it away there too. Huh? Just he's right in front of you, Tony. You don't need Jarvis for this one. struggling to land this finisher here for this finishing blow even there we go that'll work all right not great um but you did get to see a little bit more of the boss fight which is fine and you got to see me scramble and do a uh plan b which is always important for a marathon event so typically we would use two tesla coils to really whittle down his health um and uh and uh push him away from the center but we had trouble pushing him away from the center when it really mattered and he managed to get a heal off so we just committed to the traditional uh, casualties of war, we're going to play as Brigade, the guy we just killed, and take out Wolverine. We didn't manage to land a shot on him, but that's okay, we can use this lamp. If he jumps back up here, nice. Lamp does a lot of damage to him. And, wow, okay. That's actually very funny, because typically, you swing the lamp, you swing the lamp, and then you throw the lamp, and he just dies. Um, but in this case, we actually did a slightly different spin on it. We used it as a ring out, which also works. Now we get to play as Magneto. Uh, this is the only mission that doesn't start with a cutscene you have to skip, so we're not going to press any button, uh, except L, because we're immediately going to go flying. Going to take out all of these coils to break out of the power plant that we're stuck in. Okay, land, oh, I mean, hey, if they want to help me break the Tesla coils, I'm fine with that, because sometimes they don't break on one throw. I tried to dodge into the coil, but of course, he dodged into a bullet. There we go, they blew it up for me, and we should be good to move on now, I think. Yeah, good. I had to swing the camera around and make sure. This is among the shorter missions in the game. There you go. Just a race to the finish. This next mission is interesting. We have a very important strategy surrounding a tank that's sitting in the middle of the level. And we want to make sure we can keep that tank alive until we need it, which is toward the end. So we're going to do our best to take out the flying enemies as quickly as possible, because they have the strongest likelihood of blowing up the tank. We're also going to make use of that electric wall and see if we can push enemies directly into it, which does a lot of damage with very little effort. We like that. Hard to get the perfect angle while they're dodging. There we go. Nice. Didn't quite kill him, but I got close. That'll do it. Ooh, that's okay. You do a jab grab into the electric war, oh, uh, wall. I tried to say wall and barrier. There we are. Now we have a couple flying enemies. We need to make sure we're ready to grab them. It's one. Hopefully we can use that car. Where's the other flying enemy? Did he die on his own? He must have. Okay. We'll take it. Whoa! He threw the car right back at me. You're not supposed to do that. That's mean. Uh, but that's okay. Got a lot of damage out of that one car on the first model. Ooh, we push this guy into the fire. I don't know if he takes fire damage, actually. Doesn't appear like he does. Oh, he does. Very, very little, though. More, more weak to electric. Anyways, now we get to use the tank that we've been protecting. Hopefully we hit this right. It's in practice yesterday I did. There we go. That's what we want. 
just instantly crush them, and then if it doesn't kill them, the explosion does. That was cool. Should not have hit that angle. If we get an opportunity to pop Rage, we're not going to uh, question it, we're going to take it, because we could actually use it. Uh, it's, it's helpful. Um, Magneto has some of the weakest durability, so we're not able to take nearly as many hits as other characters. So having Rage is also kind of like a, a life insurance, you know? Now we're going to fly over to the remaining enemies. Ooh, we do have the tank hat, as I like to call it, the top of the tank. We get to recycle that. We get to use the uh, trash can. Um, we did a jump shot, predicting that he might do a super block and fire it right back at us. And that did pay off. We just have to spam A, and we win. All right, now there's no more mission select. Whoa, that's a weird camera. I don't think that's a softlock though, because it was just through the wall. Okay, good. Poison Steel and Duel of Masters are two very, very simple uh, boss fight missions where we just try to bait a ring out as best as we can. He's holding a barrel. Oh, there we go. He doesn't usually pick up a barrel. That's why I had to comment on it. There we go. Sometimes you can't force a ring out, so you just get an air grab whenever you see them. And that works just the same. Duel Masters is an even easier one to bait. Uh, Magneto is not that fond of picking up objects himself. He's more akin to just, like, try shooting at you. So what I said earlier about cutting off line of sight can be very, very helpful here. But we have a lot more energy to play with since we're not a flying character, we're a teleport character. We can just go for an air grab if he gets close. He did not. Or he did, actually, at one point. But I just, I was mashing X, wasn't able to hit it. This next mission, Paragon's Revenge, is a casual killer. Um, it used to be a super bad run killer as well for me. But we have strategies to make it a lot easier than it used to be. Uh, and I'm going to employ them as much as possible. But I may be on the quiet side, at least at the beginning. Interesting camera. Managed to hit the shot. Nice speed. That's okay. Oop. Teleport, that works. Oh, we're getting hit a lot right now. I'm just gonna defuse that with the dash attack. There we go. We're in the quick now. of how the camera swings back and forth when you try to hit Rage facing left. Because sometimes the camera will force it so that you're actually facing right. Or, you know, down or up. Which don't work as well. It is a pretty forgiving window, as long as you're facing like kind of left, it doesn't have to be true left. Um, but, you want to be safe sometimes. You don't have a lot of control over the camera. I mean, you, you do have a C-stick and you can control it, but the camera also tends to mind its own business sometimes, and you have to be ready for that. Nice. Might hit the barrel, that's okay. I don't even know how that kick hit him. Hold on to this a little bit, pop it now. Done. That ought to do it. Now we gotta destroy the cloning tanks so no other paragons can be made. We have a crap ton of energy too. Typically you don't come in here with that much energy, but we made it very easy on ourselves. And now we have the final mission of the game, which is Meet Your Maker. We fight the arch villain of them all, uh, Niles Van Rokel. And we have a very, very cool way of dealing a lot of damage as Paragon. Paragon has a touch of death combo. 
Now, it's only a true touch of death on characters with low dur durability, so it shouldn't one-shot Rokul, but it's going to get very close. If I hit it. You have to be careful. Ooh. Uh, he might head to the middle to regain energy and health. Okay. That's a bit of a shame, but we'll just try it when he gets out. We pop raids. That's, that's the touch of death combo right there. Didn't quite deal all of himself, but it was a lot. And it puts him in range for a finisher. Him having rage is a big pain in the ass, though. Ooh, wait, I shouldn't have said that word. There we go. We managed to get him into a corner where we were able to pressure him into danger, which is where you can perform a finisher or fatality. And that is one of the many ways that you can stop the timer. Either you see that meet your maker complete, or you see the first uh, frame of the finisher cutscene. Um, that's pretty much it. Yeah. You don't understand. Um, but yeah, that is Marvel Nemesis: Rise of the Imperfects uh, or Imperfects for uh, the Nintendo GameCube in any percent. Uh, it's a one hour and four minute run. If I were to make an estimate, I would say uh, one hour and ten minutes. Um, because while I do have the world record for this at a 57 minutes and 18 seconds for a marathon, I think it makes a lot more sense to add a 10 minute buffer. Um, we already had a kind of marathon-esque run where because I was talking and because I got distracted a number of times, it's not something I'm super used to. Um, I was a little bit on the slower side for some of the missions. But I think overall I did pretty good. I didn't have any deaths, I didn't have any major setbacks, and I didn't have any soft locks either. As far as those soft locks are concerned, we do have the ability of loading saves um, from our memory card. So I will have a save on Femme Fatale, for instance, as well as a couple of other like checkpoint missions at various breakpoints in the run. Um, maybe like uh, Seek and Devour and um, uh, Scuttle. Missions that are a little bit longer, a little bit more prone to uh, hazards. Um, and that way, in the event of a soft lock, we can always just uh, load up a save at that point uh, because we do have auto save turned off, which can be a liability. Uh, but in this case, it's not. Uh, and yeah, I think uh, an hour and ten estimate uh, would uh, work for this game because of the soft lock issue, because of uh, inconsistencies in AI. As you were able to see, I wasn't able to get every strat first try. Some of them took a few efforts, um, but I think this could be a really good marathon game. It's a really cool opportunity for people to see their favorite uh, Marvel heroes before the MCU was established. Um, and yeah, I think it's a pretty cool game with a really cool community of, of awesome people. Uh, I'm very happy to have joined this community or had a, a help in kickstarting it. Uh, I mentioned earlier that in 2014 uh, was the first run for this game, and that was actually me when I was in high school. Uh, and uh, yeah, it, it's, kind of in, it's kind of incredible how much this community has uh, changed over the years since then, uh, and kind of formed uh, uh, in like an absence of runs, and then runs appeared, and all sorts of new strategies came about. Uh, it's really been a treat to be a part of, um, and I'd love to showcase uh, some of our findings with uh, Games Done Quick. So, uh, 